Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP, Tom Morgan. In this series of videos, we're talking about building declarative agents with API plugins for Microsoft Copilot. In this video, we're actually gonna build our own Copilot. So follow along with me as I share my screen. We've already talked about the prerequisites you need and I'm gonna be using some of those today. Um, and we've already done a demo of the thing that we're gonna be building. So hopefully you're ready now to build your own. Okay, so I'm in Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna be using the Teams Toolkit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new app and we've got a couple of different options here. We're gonna choose the top one, which is agent to create a declarative agent. We're gonna create a declarative agent with a plugin. So we get the options to create one with just the agent by itself or also with the plugin, but we want the one with the plugin. You could start with a brand new API as well. We are going to start with an open API description document because we already have our API in place. And so we're going to uh, browse for our open API spec file. If you don't already have an open API spec file, check out the previous video uh, in the series where we talked about how to create one of these spec files if you don't already have one. So I've selected my open API spec file and the API is now loaded into the API Explorer, which you can see on the left hand side. Uh, we want to include all of these methods because as you can see, I've created a single API that's got all of the different methods I need kind of in one place and nothing more and nothing less. So I can just select all of them. Uh, if you've got lots of uh, other methods that you don't want to include for Copilot, you can just selectively tick the ones you want. And then when you're ready, you click generate. You choose a location where you want it to be. I think that'll be fine. Give it an application name. And the scaffolding will create a new project for you. There's a, there's a nice readme file that will take you through um, what you've created and how to use it and what to change. But let's just look through some of the things we need to do. So if I open up the app package folder, we've got a couple of different files here. The really big thing for me is how few files there are. Um, actually looking at this for, for what it's going to do, there's actually not that much to do here. So let's start with the declarative agent manifest. So. If I was building this out, there'd be some things I'd change around the name and the description. You can see that the instructions uh, is all contained in the instructions file. We're going to look at that in a minute. And you can see there's an action here, uh, which uh, is the API plugin itself. So there's a separate file describing the API. Now this was generated for us and we can go through and make some changes if we want to. Um, just be aware it is a generated file. So if you step through that process again, um, you just need to just sort of be aware of that. Uh, but this would be a good place to review things like the conversation starters, uh, the descriptions and all the rest of it. So things you need to do, uh, check and change the names and the description of your agent. Have a look at the conversation starters and change them if appropriate. And then the a really big thing to do is to have a look at this instruction because at the moment the sort of default is fairly basic it's to say you're a declarative agent and you should start every response with thanks for using the team's toolkit um, and then answer the question and help the user so i'm going to make some fairly sweeping changes to this um, if i was you know building this out for uh for real for building that out for cl for closed pilot because the real work if you like the real effort in building these declarative agents is in making sure that you scope the problem domain for your agent really clearly so your your agent is really clear about the things it needs to do so uh let's look at this you are closed pilot you're an agent that uses information about the weather and appointment details okay um you'll be asked what clothes to wear and you should provide your recommendations by following rules and invoking API calls. The other thing I do is I really um, explicitly call out the API calls you need to use and the names I'm using here match to the names in the, op the API plugin JSON file. Okay, so you're, I'm saying use these API calls when creating your, your suggestions. Now, this when this gets invoked, when your user starts a conversation, it's possible that the API might not be available and one of those, or it's possible that one of those calls will error. What should happen then? I'm putting in a, an edge case to say, okay, if you can't do that, um, you should do something about it. 
um, so that you know you you don't try and make it up just refuse to go any further if you can't get all the clothes if you can't get the activities and you can't get the weather I know and I'm telling you as an agent you can't do your job so um, you need to stop I've got a bunch of suggestions uh, or suggested rules that it should follow um, that kind of make sense for this particular problem domain uh, when you're building this out for your application you'll probably have your own as well uh, there some of these are uh, sort of I thought up the first time around some have come in as a result of using the application uh, for instance the ones at the bottom so around Friday is a bit more dressed down it's a bit more casual than other days uh, this was an interesting one that came up through just experimentation um, that if you're going to suggest a jumper think about layering because actually it wasn't doing that it would suggest a jumper but no t-shirt or no shirt underneath um, and uh, I, I prefer to wear my clothes in layers so yeah those kind of really specific instructions come out as a result of a bit of uh, experimentation it's not just all about getting clothes and stuff though so this is an important addition to the instruction set around confirming the clothing or accepting the recommendations and when that happens you need to call the post mark clothing as worn api and you need to pass the details of those clothes to make sure it gets updated Another important thing I added on as a result of experimentation was to provide explanation about why they've been chosen. Why did you choose these clothes? What was the reason for it? And then finally, uh, I found it helpful, and I think you might as well, just to list out uh, really clearly the API calls and what they're for. Because okay. this is giving Copilot an, an additional piece of information on top of the descriptions on the API files, on top of everything else, you're giving it a list of here are the API calls and here is what they do. Finally, one of the things you can do is uh, in the uh, declarative agent JSON, uh, you can add an additional capability. So this is quite interesting and quite fun. Uh, one of the things you can do and that I did with Closed Pilot is enable the graphic art capability. And this invokes Microsoft Designer so that in your chat with the with uh, your agent you can say well draw me a picture of that or show me a picture of that what that would look like and it's really simple to add it in to your agent as well all you need to do is add a capability section in this schema and uh, add a capability section and add an entry called graphic art okay um, if you're doing that it's probably worth adding in for me anyway it was worth adding an instruction in here to say well okay if you're going to do that when generating images um, I wanted my images to be shown in a modern home office setting that made the most sense for this particular problem domain but once you've added in that capability you can then sort of specify how it gets used and you can really hone it for your problem domain in these instructions so this is why these instructions are so important um, because they really define how your agent works and how it's going to call those APIs and in what way so pay a lot of time spend a lot of time pay a lot of attention to these in this instruction set because it's a really important part of the whole process once you're happy with your instructions once you're happy with your declarative agent json file and you've got everything ready and exactly how you want it moving to the next stage is provisioning so open up the team's toolkit bar again and look down to the lifecycle section and click provision now you do need to make sure you're signed in and you've got app upload up enabled when you click provision it's going to create in microsoft azure a resource group it's going to create an app it's going to create everything that you need um, to host this for you another really important thing that provisioning does is handle your api key usage and your authentication so in my open api spec file I defined that my API call is secured with an API key because of that the API key itself by the way is never kept in the open API spec it's kept securely in uh, Microsoft 365 and I'll show you where in a minute but because of that as part of this provisioning process uh, when you click provision you're going to be asked up here to enter your API key so if it looks like it's not working and it looks like it's stuck on provisioning just check around see what it says because if it says creating the api key 
have a look up here because it's what it's actually doing is asking you to put in the API key. So I can put in an API key. What it's going to do is take that API key and it's going to upload it to the Teams developer portal. I'll show you that in a minute. What that means is that your key gets stored securely in the Teams developer portal. The Teams toolkit gets a reference to that and that's what goes in the code. So that at runtime, your key is fetched securely out of what is essentially a key vault. Um, it's not Azure Key Vault, but it's stored in Teams Toolkit. Uh, it's like a vault for your keys. Uh, and it's stored securely there and it's brought back in runtime and given to uh, to your code so that um, your API can, can run. That's all handled for you. Uh, you don't have to really think about it or worry about it. You don't have to write any code to do it. It's all sort of managed for you, which is which is really nice. So this provisioning process is going to create an application. It's going to register an application. It's going to register a Teams app. It's going to create that API key. And all of that has been done. What it's also done is created the app packages that you need. At this point, you can actually go and try this thing out. So you can go to run and debug and you can preview in Copilot. And what that's going to do is open up a new browser window, which is going to open Copilot. And it's gives you, if you look up here in the right hand side under agents, it's giving you this closed pilot demo experience. So you're now using your agent. Okay. And you can see we've got the, we never changed them. But you can see those conversation starters. Um, so I can say, I can say lots of things in here actually that are nothing to do with the instruction set. So the instruction set was all around what clothes should be worn tomorrow. But I could also say, uh, What's the weather tomorrow? Now, this is not going to give me the weather for all the cities in the world because my API is really specifically scoped to only get the weather where I am because this is my problem domain. Okay. But just because your instruction set includes a whole bunch of things we put in about combining APIs together, there's no reason why you can't specifically target APIs as well with other questions. And you can see here, it's asking whether or not it's okay to connect to this API. Uh, again, I should have given this a better name. If I'd done that in the manifest, this would have been clearer to a user to what's going on. Uh, but you can see also the description of the API call as well. So this is all coming from that API spec. So you can see how it's really important to put in the good names and good descriptions on your API spec and, uh, and in all the manifest files. So I'm going to say always allows for this. So it's going to make that API call. Uh, it's probably going to fail because I put in a fake API uh, key. So we're going to go and look at that in a minute and then I'll come back. I'll, I might use a um, another key, another instance where it is working. Now you can see it says, I'm sorry, Dave, I can't let you do that, uh, which I wasn't expecting, but it makes complete sense because if we come back to our instruction set here, you can see here I said in vocal for every clothing suggestion, invoke three API calls and use this information. If you can't do any of these things, this is your reply. Okay, so because I didn't put the API key in correctly, I put a fake API key in because um, I didn't actually think I was ever going to use it. Um, it can't make that call. Now, if you're a developer, this is a bit of a pain. So there is something you can do, which is to type dash developer mode uh, sorry, I think it's developer mode on. Right, that obviously wasn't right. The thing to type is dash developer on. Turn that developer on. Right, so we've successfully enabled developer mode. Um, so if I now say, what's the, what's the weather tomorrow? Okay, there's a problem with the weather, problem getting the weather, which we know, but now we get this plugin developer info bar. I can break this open. I can now see here are the plugins that are enabled and we've only got one enabled. Here are all the functions that it found. Here's the function that it chose. So based on its orchestration of the question, it decided, so you can see it's, it's evaluated all of these functions it could call. It's decided the one it wants to call is get tomorrow's weather, which is the right one. It's called it and it's got an unauthorized and that's because we put the wrong key in. 
So that's all pretty impressive. We know it's all working. Uh, the only problem is that we put the key in wrong. So we can go and fix that. So let me show you where we go and do that. Okay, so this is the Microsoft Teams developer portal. You get to it by going to dev.teams.microsoft.com. If I look in tools, I can see there's an API key registration section. And in here, this is where the API keys are stored. So the first thing you need to know is your registration ID for uh, in, this, in this API key store. The registration ID was created for us. So let's come back to our code for a minute and, uh, and have a look at what we've got. So we've got the API plugin reference. And if we come right to the end of our API, open API spec file, uh, you can see here is the auth section where we said, okay, the auth type is um, an API key. It's created, well, it's actually what it's done is looked at the open API spec and said, right, there's an API key is the, the auth method. So what that gets translated into an API key plugin vault. So the plugin vault is the thing that's in the Teams dev portal. And there's a reference ID here, which is the bearer author registration ID. This is just a, a this gets filled in at provision time, at build time with the actual ID. So in order to find that, if we go to the build folder and look at the same file, because this gets generated on every build, we can see here we've got a reference ID, we've got the actual ID BF65. And if we look in here, hopefully, yep, there's a registration ID in here called BF65. So if we look at this, this has got in it both a base URL. So this has to match the uh, the base URL of the API that it gets passed to. It's got a place for us to give it a meaningful name. And it's got that secret that I just started putting ABCD in. In order to update this, we can't delete this because it's the only secret and you have to have at least one secret. But we can add a new secret. I'm going to put the actual function, uh, the, the correct key for this function in. Um, and then when it's gone in correctly and been added, then I can delete the old one. There we go. And now that I've done that, if I come back here, um, what I'll do actually is I think you probably would do the same. I'll just stop and start debugging again. And now this time, if I say, what's the weather? I correctly get the weather. You can see if I open the plugin developer info, same process as before, evaluated all the functions, chose the right one. This time we get a 200 OK because we put the correct key in. Evaluating all of the APIs, or all of the method calls in your APIs individually before trying to combine them all together using your instructions can be a really nice thing to do because it just gives you that confidence that everything is working um, before you try and put it all together. It can get a bit messy uh, with trying to debug is the problem in understanding the instruction set that you've given your agent and com like converting that into API calls always the problem with the API calls. So if you can really make sure that the API calls work really well first, then it makes it much easier to put it all together. But now I could use this uh, to do exactly the same things uh, as I showed in my last video, where you can combine all these different API calls together to be presented with a list of what to wear for, based on schedule and weather. As you can see, once you have the prerequisites in place, once you have the APIs in place, and once you know what you want to build, actually putting it together is quite a straightforward process. It's really just a case of using the scaffolding to create the bare bones and then coming up with the instruction set. The really important part in all of this, really good names, really good descriptions. That's what will really help Copilot understand which of your calls you need to call when and, and when it makes sense to do them and combine them together in sensible ways. I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much for watching.